Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. Something very different from me this week and in the coming weeks as well. You see, I'm gonna make a series of videos all about the contents of this box. Yesterday I scoured the internet for what I consider to be the cheapest and nastiest but serviceable digital camera that money can buy. I haven't seen the contents of this box yet. I really haven't, it's still sealed. But I bought this digital camera for the total sum of 19 pound. 19 pound. Oh, I can't wait to see what it looks like. Let me read something. I was doing a bit of research to find out what the tech spec was on this particular camera. Listen to this. Switch to the future with the EOS 350D digital and take your creativity to a new dimension. Compact, lightweight and intuitive, delivering results to captivate the most discerning audience. The EOS 350D digital employs Canon's acclaimed CMOS technology for outstanding image quality and eight megapixel resolution. Eight megapixel resolution. Just for the record, this camera came out in 2005. So that means that's a 17 year old camera, 17 year old technology. I'm gonna be out and about shooting various, um, I'm gonna create different videos each week. I'm gonna start off with a real basic landscape photography video, only using this camera, of course. Then I'm gonna move on to woodland, street photography. I want to do fine art photography with it as well and really push the boundaries and see how creative I can be for the paltry sum of less than a box of Budweiser. <laughs> Even the flash works. So do me a favor, join me over the next few weeks as I put this 19 pound camera through its paces. You never know, you might well be surprised and hopefully I will be as well. You've no idea, honestly, how excited I am about the videos coming over the next few weeks. But if you want to know where I'm taking this experiment, then I'll leave a list up there of the videos that you guys can expect to see from me. Let me just clarify a couple of small pointers before we start this experiment, which I'm really looking forward to, by the way. Camera body, as you know, the 19 pound camera body, two old lenses, a Sigma 10 to 20 mil lens, and an old Canon lens, uh, 24 to 105 mil. I'll also be using an old camera tripod, not that that really makes much of a difference. This is my trusty old Manfrotto tripod. It is a good tripod, it's a right old big and bulky thing, but as you can see, it's uh, pretty well worn. So that's the equipment I'll be using, along with my Nissi filters. Obviously, I'm going to use filters. During one of the experiments, I will probably do something similar to what I'm doing now, but using cheap filters as well. Okay, but that is coming up. And on top of that, my post-production will be done in my normal way through Photoshop. I've decided to just post-process my work in the normal way because there's probably a couple of points there I want to prove. But either way, it's an accessible bit of software to everybody. And of course, you don't have to use Photoshop and Lightroom that I'll be using. You can use whatever software that you want. But yeah, right off the bat, I want to make it perfectly clear. That is the equipment I'll be using. And in post-production, it's, uh, well, it's actually ACR, not Lightroom. It's ACR and Photoshop. So then, coming up in this video, I'm going to be taking one or two shots of the mid and north pier here in Blackpool. I absolutely love Blackpool. And I thought, what a great place to kick off this experiment. And just to put you in the picture, the time at the moment is quarter to five and sunset is quarter to six. High tide is right now.
I'm just getting set up now. I'll talk you through my setup process in a second, but a couple of things that's going to be a little bit awkward by using old technology. The screen at the back isn't very clear. The screen at the back is not live view, so I can't see the image unless I look through the viewfinder. Again, it's not really a problem. It's what we all had to do in the early stages anyway. The histogram only appears after I take a shot. So I can't set my camera up as per my histogram. And a couple of little niggly things as well. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's just a case of, uh, of suck it and see when it comes to old technology. But let's get our first shot in the bag. The main shot I want to take I'm not sure if I can grab it when there's a sunset, if, the, if at all there's going to be a sunset. But I want to photograph the North Pier as opposed to the Central Pier. The big wheel has gone from the Central Pier as well, that's a real shame. Because that was quite nice, especially over a long exposure. But anyway, right, I'm bumbling away. Let's talk you through my setup. Now, there's no level on the camera either. As always, I'm in manual. I've opted for F11. My ISO is as low as I can get it because I don't know what the quality of these images are going to be like but ISO 100 is pretty much the norm when it comes to landscape photography anyway as you guys will probably know. So F11 ISO 100 then I'm just adjusting my shutter speed according to the built-in light meter not histogram built-in light meter. I'm taking an image and then I'm looking at the histogram just to make sure that I've got all that lovely detail in. That experience tells me to use a soft grad filter on the top just to bring the light down in the sky. Okay, so I think I'm ready for shot number one. Let's have a look at this. There's no two second timer either. It's a full 10 second timer. So let's just click that and see how that transpires. Now, from what I can see of the image, compositionally wise, it looks okay. It looks fairly level, although that's something I can deal with in post-production. But what I am slightly worried about is the quality of the screen. I hope it's the quality of the screen on the back of the camera doesn't show off the picture very well. It makes the image look really misty. And that is a worry to me because I'm hoping that it's not misty. <laughs> I'm just going to assume that the quality of the screen on the back of this camera is really, really poor by today's screens. And I'm just going to carry on with the experiment and suck it and see and fingers crossed it'll be fine. I'm sure it will be. It's amazing how quickly your confidence is shattered when you see the images that you think are nice on the back of your camera look woeful it knocked me for six a little bit but i thought i'd have to carry on just on the hope and the proviso that the images were in fact good well spoiler alert when i got home the first thing i did was i threw the images onto my pc and thankfully thankfully the images were great and looked nothing like they did on the back of the camera so there's testament to a technology that we probably all take for granted the back of our screens they're almost like iPhones, iPads or whatever nowadays. They are fantastic, but it's a technology that we probably overlook and not really give enough credit to the camera manufacturers for. Anyway, time to stop dithering and it's time to crack on and take pictures. That is looking good. Focus to manual, apply the filters manual 30 second exposure a lot of sensors suffer from burn marks especially old sensors during a long exposure i'm hoping that as much as this is old technology it'll still be okay and okay to use fingers crossed on that uh, my histogram is saying that that's fine but i'm getting a very white picture on the back of the camera which is a little bit worrying and a little bit alarming so what I'm going to do, to be on the safe side, I'm still going to leave it at 30 seconds, but I'm just going to close that aperture a bit more. I'm going to close it by another stop to F16, and I'm going to reduce that time down to 25 seconds. That's only a third of a stop less, but I just want to ensure I'm giving myself a fighting chance to get this picture right. Got an orange sun over there. That's pretty cool. This is looking really good from here. 
looking really really nice you just get about a third of the pier in including the sun as well now shooting directly into the sun this is going to be a real test a real test of the durability of the old technology more importantly is how much dynamic range these old cameras offered us that sky's looking really nice i might have got very lucky f16 30 second exposure at iso 100. it is a bit awkward especially when you're used to using a a live view and b a live histogram to just take a picture and then look at your histogram and then make an informed decision is not really me at all but of course with gear like this it's how you do it it's how it used to be done that looks nice there might be a tiny tiny bit of clipping on the right hand side so i'm just going to reduce my light down on hitting that sensor by one stop by increasing my shutter speed one two three let's take another shot and apart from the image looking misty i like that that's quite nice oh i'm all of 10 mil on there with the 1.6 crop on there effectively effectively that's a an equivalent to a 16 mil lens which is what i would normally use in this instance anyway now this video is the first video hopefully in a line of videos to come and in this video i want to just attack this in a very basic manner i don't want to waste the whole evening by taking pictures on a camera that might be faulty maybe the images aren't that good at all i might have to up my game and spend a bit more than 19 pound on a camera body but in future videos i'll break what i'm doing down a lot more before we look at these final images just take 10 seconds out to appreciate the equipment that i'm using first launched in 2005 that's 17 years ago wasn't even professional equipment in those days it was very amateurish so just pause for a second what do you think the pictures will look like